uh, I think one of the greatest values that you have, or one of the greatest lessons you could learn in life is to ask the question, why? Asking why is not a bad thing. It's not arguing. It's not debating. It's, it's, it's finding out an essence of something. And it starts from why, not what or how. It's, it's why. Welcome to the Carl Loran Show, a weekly podcast designed to dig into the lives of everyday people people who are making a positive impact, people who have risen above and overcome obstacles, insights and stories from ordinary individuals who inspire us all towards the truly extraordinary. Here's your host. All right, I'm excited to have Chris Clem on here with me today. And I want to tell you a little bit about Chris. So I reached out to him and we haven't seen each other, Chris, since... Well, it's been a long time. I think you came to visit, but you're actually living in 2014. And you're actually in Finland and you've been in Finland for like 20 years or? 24 now, 25, going on 25. Wow. So we actually went to school together and you and my Mm -hmm. brother, my older brother, Craig, were really good friends. You'd come and like build forts together and have all kinds of fun. We went to the same church, went to the same school. So we saw a lot of each other. And so it's really kind of cool to like connect now. And so I'm really excited Mm -hmm. about where this conversation is going to go. You have a lot to share, Chris, about your experience, you know, in Edson and then moving to Finland and then kind of what that looks like and family life and all Mm -hmm. the rest of it. So thanks for being on the podcast today, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's uh, surreal. Yeah. To be honest with you. Good. Yeah, but it was very nice to talk with you uh, off offline as well. So let's see where this goes. Yeah. What can I say? So why don't you so, tell yeah, us? They, yeah. Tell us about you yeah. know where you grew up and just kind of what mm. your life was like in Edson and then kind of transition to moving. All right. Well, to get a little bit of a picture of where the Edson part came from, I actually moved out to Edson from from uh, Barrie in Ontario, actually. Okay. And uh, one of the main reasons that we actually moved out there in the first place was because I was really sick with asthma. I still have asthma now, thankfully, not as bad. So I spent a lot of time in the hospital. My parents, uh, being the loving people that they are, made some pretty big sacrifices to move out west. They heard that uh, when you reach above sea level, plus the mountain air, it's much drier than what the uh, the Ontario uh, climate was like. It was supposed to be better for people with asthma, which turned out to be true. Okay. But uh, when we first moved to Edson, it was after a little stint in Hinton. Thankfully, we did not live our lives too much longer than we did in in uh, in Hinton. And uh, immediately when we came to Edson, I actually didn't even go to the Christian school. I didn't even meet, meet you guys yet. Uh, I went to West Haven, West Haven Elementary School back then. And I was a kid with many behavioral problems because I had a lot of problems uh, kind of um, blending in uh, socially and uh Thankfully, my parents ended up making a good decision to send me over to the Christian school. And Craig, your brother, was actually the very first person I met and came uh, shortly after to be basically my best friend throughout my childhood. So it's so cool to hear that from your perspective, because I had no idea. I just see there's this Chris guy. Didn't he just like wasn't he born in the school? Like I didn't know, right, that there was any kind of history before. That's cool. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So tell me more. Yeah. So I'm. Well, well, what can I say? Uh, so I grew up, uh, grew up in Edson, grew up actually a lot at your place. Uh, on the weekends, we spent an awful lot of time together out there doing exactly what you, what you said, doing stupid things as what boys do. We climb too high in trees and with very heavy pieces of wood. And uh, yeah, maybe it's best not to say everything that we did because <laughs> I would never do, let my kids do the same. Um, but we somehow survived. And uh, yeah, I mean, good times. If it wasn't actually for your family, I probably wouldn't be where I am now because uh in all honesty they kind of were my second second parents if i will because i spent so much time at your place on the weekends as i recall so yeah and that uh, fort that you guys made like people have to understand yeah. this is not just like like a little tp or like a little lean to you know a, a shack like this yeah. was like it had levels like there was like three levels yeah. and then they made yeah. a boardwalk so like you're yeah. up like i don't know 20 feet in the air and then there's this boardwalk and i remember when my yeah. mom finally came out to see what we were actually doing she's like oh my goodness i don't yeah. think she realized how extravagant this fort was i remember we slept out there me and a friend friend one yep. time and I think you and Craig probably did too and oh yes yeah it was oh, like yes. there was even a, a little gable that you guys had built and like I think he put a window in there at one point and there was like trap yeah. doors like it was amazing it was amazing yeah it was pretty extravagant it was kind of like our fortress but yeah the 20 foot high thing was pretty interesting uh, <laughs> because we actually climbed the trees we didn't have ladders we just climbed the trees and had the had the board sitting on our shoulder and at the same time trying to hammer these nails in oh it was fun times that's Good crazy stuff. <laughs> so crazy yeah. yeah oh my goodness I was scared even just to go on that I can't imagine trying to build 
build it. But yeah, we won't we won't uh, we won't talk too much about that and scare all the moms out there. But but oh, you, you guys survived. <laughs> you guys survived. We survived. We survived. Yeah. So you went, you yeah. finished school in Edson, and then mm. you, why did you move to Finland? Tell us why did you move there. Well, as you know, the the last year of high school, I met my wife who came over to to Edson for some reason. I don't know why Edson, <laughs> but she came there as an exchange student, and uh, she's a she's a believer as well. And we met through the church. Yeah. One thing went to led to another, and uh, yeah, I couldn't live my life without her anymore. It was pretty pretty clear to me in that last year of high school that this is the one for me. So I had to follow her. I came over here. The, the the following summer after graduating and uh, we got engaged here i went went back to, to canada to work she stayed here in finland to finish her school here in finland then after that she moved to canada we got married there ended up living there for a year and then realizing that hmm um maybe some education might be a good idea and uh the the, the kind of everyday work just wasn't cutting it but uh, when you think about education in Canada, it's very costly. And there was an opportunity back here in Finland for both of us to be able to study. I want to say for free, but it's never free. But right. from the society's point of view, it's studying for free. So right. ever since then, we've been living here. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of people have done that. Like if they had some kind of like connection with Finland, they'd go there to study because mm -hmm. then they wouldn't have right. to pay out of their own pocket. So it's That's right. definitely, a, definitely a pull. Okay, so you study, what did you, mm -hmm. what did you study, Chris? Uh, international business with marketing logistics was the first that was the bachelor degree and then now I've got a master's degree in business as well it's an entrepreneur entrepreneurial studies okay cool so yeah yeah it's cool yeah it's cool it's fun so so tell yeah. us then what did you do because I know that you've gone through this period now where mm -hmm. you haven't been employed for a while mm -hmm. um can you kind of well tell us first about your kids you've got a few, a few kids I believe yeah yeah I've got five kids the oldest is 21 youngest is uh, 11 and the rest are somewhere in between. <laughs> uh, I, I do remember their ages. Yeah. But there's uh, we've got four girls, one boy and a dog. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah the oldest one has already moved out. The second one is, uh, has graduated and is thinking about her studies. And now our family is getting ready to move to a different city in, in Finland. So yeah, wow. lots of uh, exciting things going on. That's a big deal. Yeah. yeah and so you probably know that I have six kids. So I started with a girl and then I just had all boys after that. Right. So we're kind of reverse. Right. And then you started before me, you're a little bit older than me. So you and Satu kind of started having yep. kids a little bit hey. earlier. <laughs> just, just a couple a years. Bit. Maybe, just a little bit. Yeah. Just, just a, a tiny bit. bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's cool. Right. right on. Yeah. So, so tell me, then so you, you got a job though right a pretty good job in Finland you were happy with it oh yeah 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 very happy that actually happened uh, quite interestingly it uh, it happened in the last year of my uh, bachelor studies there was a kind of a recruitment drive for a, a global company that was going through the different schools I was the last person to apply the last person they interviewed and I happened to get in straight from school I didn't even finish my school yet at that point when I started working so it was really convenient I just kind of slipped in from uh, the school days into the working days and I was there at that company for 13 and a half years before the change has occurred yeah and, uh, yeah ever since then it's been a bit of a ride so tell me about tell me about the ride Chris what's that been like this unemployment ride yeah, yeah. This is one of the reasons why I was talking with you offline that this might be an interesting topic for some because I, I think in today's world there's a lot of changes happening and we're seeing even educated and experienced people losing their losing their job and having difficulty getting back in the job environment and, and kind of the how would you say the the emotional experiences that a person goes through in that process. Mm -hmm. And I want to be obviously sensitive to to the women, just as there is, is to to the men. But I think it's it's important to consider that for a man to lose their job when they have this stereotype. We were talking offline about stereotypes and mm -hmm. and and what, what what are expectations in society and what we perceive those expectations to be. One of those expectations is that the man is the one who brings home the money for the family, the one who looks after the family, mm -hmm. financially speaking. And when you can no longer do that and you're not in control of that, um, that hits you pretty hard. And initially after losing losing that job, and actually it wasn't because I was fired or I was doing a bad work. It was, it was literally because the organization was reorganizing itself several times at the time. And I was in IT. So it was a very big uh, department, so about 500 people, oh, sorry, yeah, about 500 people globally. I was looking after global global groups, but they were reorganizing it so that they would outsource, outsource most of those people. Mm -hmm. Once I was outsourced, the company then said that we don't need you anymore. Thank you very much. So 
game over. Mm. And it was at that point when I realized that, hey, I'm not feeling very good. The last little bit of work, I was thinking that oh, it's just the changes. I was feeling incredibly down, deep, deep, deep sorrow, very difficult to get up in the morning and go to work when previously it was not a not an issue. It was really enjoyable to go to work for the most part. You mm -hmm. feel like you're kind of a part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. When that ends and it's ending out of your control, it's somebody else has decided for you and you have nothing. There's this, there's this void and trying to come into uh, come into terms with what that void really is. Is it just, you know, you're sad because you lost your job or is there something more to it? And uh, for once, I actually went to the doctor and started talking that, man, I'm, I'm struggling here. I, I, I mean, just the daily stuff, I'm breaking out and, and crying. I'm like, what is this? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the day, just randomly. And he was, he was asking me a bunch of questions. And then in the end, he ended up saying that, man, you're, 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 you're depressed. I'm like, what? No way, mm. no way. And then on the other hand, you know, as I started thinking about it, then hmm, okay, there's a there's a little light going on here. That yeah, okay, that checks, that checks, that checks. May, may, maybe that's true. Mm. What am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where the journey starts. And the longer the unemployment uh, continues, again, I'm an educated person, I've applied for many jobs. You keep, you keep throwing those applications in, you get no responses or then the usual same response. Thank you for your application. You're a great candidate, but <laughs> we have decided to choose someone else. Have a nice day. <laughs> right. So when you, when you, when you get those uh, over, over a period of many years, it, it does weigh on you a lot, definitely. Mm. So it's that initial bit of realizing that you're depressed and then having to work out what to do about it, how to actually Get out of it. Get out of it, or at least deal with it yeah. for the short term. So, what did you do? That, how did you? Journey. How did you get better or improve or whatever? Like, are you are you still struggling with it, or is it better now, Chris? Well, well, um, hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I would say so. I mean, but the, the initial the initial months were really dark days. I think if you were to talk with my wife, she would probably tell a little bit better mm -hmm. than I could. But uh, I don't know. It's 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 one of those things where job equals value, mm -hmm. work equals purpose. Your your ability to to contribute to your family's well being equals your value and your purpose. This is this is kind of the inner built stereotypical male maybe stupidly mm -hmm. nowadays to think, to be honest with you, that we can only take care of it. And when you, when you equate your value with something that you, you are, are doing as a job, it, it, it can be a calling, but for me, it wasn't a calling. It was a job. It was a way to look after my family. But when you equate your value with that and you no longer have it, that, that perception of value is then lost and mm -hmm. it's dealing with that that you that you kind of have to peel open as a, like an onion that that why do i feel that way why am i feeling that way why is it that i acted that way and i think over a period of time you start to come to terms that okay i need to work on this issue my value is not in this it's in this now i'm using this opportunity to be closer to my family and to and to take care of the uh the, the, the kids and have a closer relationship which i've wanted anyway as a father for my kids Mm -hmm. than uh, than what I could have before. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's really answering the question. It's kind, no. of, a, it's kind of a journey, a process, really. So Yeah, no, mm -hmm. it is. And it's interesting because I was talking to you, too, about, like, for me, I was always, like, I grew up, Little House on the Prairie, you know, had all the kids, mm -hmm. stayed home, mm -hmm. all that. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm in the, the, the business world. I'm in the workforce, and I'm, do, you know, running this business and doing all these things. And it's just very, very different. And so I think I've gone yeah. through a similar journey, kind of opposite as you, whereas I was, you know, at home doing the, the lady thing, doing the mom thing. And now it's just, it's been quite turned around. Now I'm still doing the mom thing, like as much as I can, when I, like I try to be home as much as I can, my job is flexible and whatever. But like right. a lot of the things that I had to go through and I really hit a wall too, over a, a lot of that. And I had to process a bunch of stuff. And I think what it comes down to Chris is like you said, you got to ask, okay, why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. And and what's mm -hmm. going on? And then you start looking at your beliefs, right? What do I believe about myself? I'm believing that I'm useless unless I mm -hmm. do this and so, and realize that exactly. it's not what you do, it's who you are ultimately, right? That's, right. That's what, That's 
right. and how God sees you and what God created mm-hmm. you to do. And I think that mm-hmm. sometimes we th- we see these struggles as like, oh, this was bad. I made a bad decision or or this is all bad. But we actually need to look at it more like this was an opportunity for God to get my attention and for me to mm-hmm. see this. And maybe some people in their life, they never get that opportunity to really um, inspect why they do what they do and inspect their beliefs and challenge their beliefs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So as much I as do. it, as it really, it sort of sucks to say this, like it, it can be a gift to go through this really hard time, but you're not going to see it that way right off the hop. But as you look back, you can see certainly it. Certainly not into it. Yeah. Certainly yeah. not in the middle of it. Definitely not. But in hindsight, definitely. Absolutely. It kind of gives a different perspective on what's really important in life. Having said that, of course, uh, financially, it's definitely not good um, mm-hmm. to be on long-term unemployment, uh, partic- particularly when you don't want to be. Mm-hmm. But when you come to terms with the reality that over here in Finland, I don't know if it's uh, the same in Canada yet, but uh, even even for some of the most common jobs, there would be a pretty long list of requirements. And if you would like a good paying job, they usually want someone who's young. They want someone who's out of school. They want someone who's had 15 years of experience already. <laughs> they they want all these different kinds of things. You have to know how to code and you have to know all these different languages. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite insane to try to get even a common job. So it's very competitive. So, extremely competitive. And it's a very small market in the end. There's only five and a half million people here. So it's tough. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, t- tell me, like, what else did you want to share? Like, is there anything else you want to share about that? Or do you want to kind of move on? I I, I don't know. It, I mean, it depends who's really listening. And I mean, if we really would think about it from a male's perspective, all I would say is what I've already repeated is that your value is not in what you do in your job. It's who you are as a person and what you are contributing to what you're, what you're, what you're contributing according to your inner calling. Mm-hmm. That is really what's important, whether you're employed or unemployed, whether you have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money. It really, it it doesn't matter. It's what you do. It's who it's who you are inside. And uh, I think one of the greatest values that you could, or one of the greatest lessons you could learn in life is to ask the question why. Asking why is not a bad thing. It's not arguing. It's not debating. It's 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 finding out an essence of something, and it starts from why, not what or how. It's, it's why mm-hmm. maybe that. Yeah. No, I think that's good. So if you're ever struggling is ask why. Yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. And ask why with everything, right? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of notorious for that uh, in every way. I'm like, mm-hmm. why, why do we do it this way? Why can't we do it that way? Well, you know, why is everybody doing it this way? That doesn't make sense to me. Right. Like it's got to, and I think asking exactly. those why, and you know, a lot of people like when their kids ask, well, why, why it's like, Oh, just be quiet and listen, you know, just do what you're told. And I think sometimes mm-hmm. like actually saying why is, it's good to be curious, right? And, and that's actually like, you know, I've heard people say that's actually an intelligent thing too, is to be able to ask questions, ask why, right? So, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, what has absolutely. it been like being a Canadian in Finland? Has that been an asset? Has that been like challenging? How would you say? Honestly, in the beginning, I'd say it's very challenging. Okay. Uh, the, 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 there's fundamental differences between the cultures. And again, these are very stereotypical, blanketed statements. This isn't the case 100% for everybody. Mm-hmm. But generally speaking, I'd say the, the Finnish people are very closed people. They're very quiet. They they don't engage very easily in small talk in particular. Or the small talk in Finland is a little bit different than what we would consider good talk in Canada, let's say it that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but the Canadians are generally, we, we like to express ourselves with body, body, body language. We like to talk about the weather. We like to talk about just basic stuff. And it's, it's not the same over here. Yeah. And and the general mentality is smaller is better. Enough is if you have enough, it's just enough. And those are good values, by the way. Mm-hmm. But in in Canada, we kind of and in America, I would say North America in general, we shoot for the stars. We shoot for something bigger, for something greater. We we challenge ourselves to more. And the Finns are kind of they they know their place, but to the to the degree where they might not stretch themselves to the next level. Mm-hmm. And and one of the best articles I read from the guardian actually in in the uk or from the uk that said about finland is that finland is probably the world's best kept secret because of their poor marketing and self value Mm -hmm. they have so much skill to offer to the world but their ability to market and tell good things about their capabilities is preventing them from getting out into the world yeah, and it's funny so, when you're when you're talking about this because Jason's family, like his mom's side of the family, like she's from Finland, like they're all very Finnish. Right. So when you're saying right. this, like 
you know, it's, it's it, like I, I, I can see some of that, not necessarily just in his mm-hmm. mom or whatever, but I can see that. So I can see kind of the how that would be. And you've always been a very social person, Chris, at least any time I've known you. Mm-hmm. You're very social, very friendly. You know, you're the kind mm-hmm. of person that you're going to put yourself out. You're going to talk, you know, use your hands, whatever, tell jokes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So probably to go mm-hmm. from, you know, especially with your personality being probably more of an extrovert or at least more social to going to a, to a culture. It used yeah. to be. OK, to go into a culture mm-hmm. where everything is, is so different. Uh, yeah, that would adju- that would affect you. Right. It definitely has. And yeah. over the course of this 20 X years, uh, it definitely has has had an effect on what would have been con- considered what I would have considered myself to be an extroverted. And you can hear it in my voice already, probably, too. I'm struggling with what's the vocabulary again. Right. It's just, just little things of living over here for so long that does uh, have an effect. On, yeah. On- well, it was kind of funny. It was sort of trippy when I talked to you on the phone and you had this accent. It was just kind of trippy. I'm like, oh, like it's Chris's voice, but there's this this, yes. this different accent, you know, but when you're there for yes. that long, of course, you're going to have an accent, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the people who speak English over here also speak generally with a British accent, but with the Finnish dialect, if you will. I don't know. They yeah. kind of say it in their own way. Yeah. So yeah. all of that has an effect. Yes. Cool. And you've kind of delved into mm. politics, Chris. Um, can you tell us mm. a little bit about politics? And I know like we could go, we talked about this. We're like, I don't know far, how far we should go down the rabbit hole, but why don't we just kind of get into it a little bit at least. Tell us a little bit about you, because you've studied politics a lot. Well, I I read a lot. Okay. I read a lot. And I think that, I think that that's one of the, the greatest maybe frustrations as a person who reads a lot to go to social media and listen to people's opinions that don't actually contain a lot of fact. It's more or less the kind of, uh, let's say, the towing the party line of what a lot of mainstream media sources are are, are saying. And I do understand that. I, mm-hmm. I should also highlight that. And we discussed this too, is that we don't really understand why politics and religious beliefs, if you want to call it that, why those are kind of taboo topics to discuss. Because I think if two people are really grown up and are able to express their thoughts and viewpoints respectfully, you can you can debate and still come away with differences of opinion and it's okay. Politics should be like that. But because people don't want to really talk about it, it seems to be this taboo, taboo topic. Mm-hmm. It polarizes. And I think that that's the that's the that's the job of media. It's not really the people per se, but I think media is really drawing people to one direction or another. And it's creating, it's creating a division within people mm-hmm. that makes it that much more difficult to discuss. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I agree because people always say, oh, just never talk about religion and politics. And I feel like what an empty, um, kind of dry, <laughs> dull, vanilla flavored world we would live yeah. in if we can't discuss those things. Because, of course, those things, they bring up the core of what we believe. And if we can't mm-hmm. talk about that, then what are we even doing? Like if all we talk about is like mm-hmm. the weather, your hairstyle, you know, your family. I mean, that's all good. But why can't you talk about those deeper things? And also like iron sharpens iron, mm-hmm. like maybe challenge each yeah. other. And, oh, did you read this? Yeah. Oh, I heard that. So then you become more open minded. You become more um, more open minded, but also more convinced about what you actually believe mm-hmm. instead of this kind of fluffy sort of, I don't know, like wrap yourself in in a bubble wrap kind of this this mindset right where you're just always trying to protect sure. protect yourself i think let's get into it let's talk about the hard things why not yeah, right yeah. It, it is an interesting phenomenon to really study people and people's reactions when you do start to get into some of the more difficult topics mm-hmm. i'm not really sure why that is well we could break it down of course but that's kind of a i think an irrelevant thing it's just a, a realization that people react differently to to, to different topics mm-hmm some of my best conversations have been with people that are from the Islam faith or um, uh, uh, Buddhist faith and and whether they're so-called straight versus homosexual. I have friends of all wide spectrums mm-hmm. who I find to be very interesting people. I think if we sit down and give them give time to understand their way of thinking, it makes it easier to engage in actual discussion that's valuable for both parties, even if you come away saying that, hey, I disagree with you, but hey, you're a great person. Mm-hmm. Hope we can talk again. And and I think politics is something we really have to work on, especially in today's environment, globally speaking, not just in Canada. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, it's a very polarizing issue because of what's happening mm-hmm. and yeah. media's role in it. Yeah, and media's role in it. Yeah, and it does seem like if if anybody doesn't agree with the mainstream narrative, with what they're trying to tell us, and it's completely. Um, 
Like, I'm just going to say it. It is not any way objective. It's extremely subjective and getting more and more that way, it seems like, or at least I'm seeing it more. There's one side that's constantly being portrayed. So you have to really watch and listen, read any kind of mainstream media, any kind of media media at all in a very discerning way and be like, okay, is this truth? Just because these people are saying it, these people are saying it, all these main groups are saying it, even the government itself is saying it, and this expert is saying Mm -hmm. it. Is that actually Mm -hmm. what's going on? Or are we just Mm -hmm. getting fed all of this stuff and we're just concerned? Assuming it because we're not maybe thinking critically, we're not reading up on our and doing our own research. And I know we're busy, right? We're busy. Maybe we can. And yeah. maybe that's one blessing that you've had with not being having to go to work all the time. You have had extra time to read. So you probably have probably a lot more information or maybe a lot more ideas um, and, and, uh, and facts even mm-hmm. than maybe mm-hmm. the average person would, would have uh, access to or information on. Yeah, there there is a fair point to that, that there's certainly, ha- there has been more time, although I think most of that time is actually spent at night when everybody's around anyway, so okay. whether I'd be working or not. But anyway, fair fair point. The consumption of material, I think, is the big thing because we have access to it and it's instant access. Whether that's good or not is another topic of debate, but I mm-hmm. think the main thing is that we're consuming things so much constantly that the ability to ask once again that question, why is this being available to me? What is this? What is the story? What is the saying? And why is it being told this way? Why is this, this thing that's happening around the world right now, feeling as if it would be coordinated from somewhere? Why is this narrative kind of coordinated? Not necessarily at the same time, you could have something happen in a particular country, and then all of a sudden, in a few days or in a couple of weeks, the same thing is spilling over in other countries. And the same type of narratives that you see in uh, articles and, and, and videos or wherever your sources may be are just being put um, applicable to the society that it, it is actually moving to now. So mm-hmm. we're seeing some of the things that were happening in Europe, how it, how it moved over to the United States and then back to China again. And so, I mean, there's all these kind of things that are circling, but the same narrative continues. And I find that very curious, particularly in an age where we're starting to see a lot of censorship of people's thoughts and opinions, which have never happened before. Mm-hmm. And there's not enough people asking that one question, why? It is not what they say. It's the fact that they haven't had a right to say it. Why? Who has given X person, X company, the right to censor people's thoughts and opinions, which have previously been allowed, whether or not they're the same opinion or not, mm-hmm. of the of the kind of common narrative? Those kind of questions are curious to me, and that's what I... That's why I like to provoke a lot of of, of uh, comments on on social media, just to kind of spark some kind of a a reaction, yeah, if you will. Yeah, and I think not that's to, not to cause arguments, but just to have some kind of a reaction. Mm-hmm. And I think that's wise because we all need to question, and we really need to question everything, no matter what political you know side of the spectrum we're on. We need to question what are our leaders telling us, and if we disagree. And if we, or if we come up with something, why is that such a, oh my goodness, do not say that, right? Like, like a lot of people are being called conspiracy theorists or they're like, why is that a thing? Why are we like, why are these people called conspiracy theorists? And these people are not conspiracy theorists, right? Like what, like what is going on here? Why do we all have to believe the same thing? And if we don't believe the same thing, then we're basically, yeah, we're censored, we're deleted, we're ignored any other way to just get like that, get that out of there. And I I noticed that a lot, Mm -hmm. actually, when I went to university, because we were talking Mm -hmm. about different topics and the university was very like, they're like, oh, nobody believes that anymore. I'm like, Mm -hmm. well, I do. And I bet there's like 50% of this class does like, but they just completely Mm -hmm. dismissed anything that I would say about religion or whatever, as if that was like, Mm -hmm. that's old school. Nobody believes that anymore. And I think that's a really good marketing tactic, right? To just be like, oh, that's, that's a faux pas. Like nobody does that anymore. You just dismiss people Mm -hmm. and then they kind of give up or they feel like, Oh, right. Whatever. Right. Um, so it takes a lot like to be able to disagree with the mainstream narrative right now with COVID, with a lot of other things that are going on. It takes a lot. It's very difficult. And I find like you you end up butting your head up so many times because they don't, they don't want it. And and it's insane. Like, why Mm -hmm. is this so such a challenge? Why don't we have more open-mindedness and why don't we have different sides, different types of thinking? I think that part of that is because we've been raised as as human beings to respect authority. So if an authoritative figure says something, it's got to be true. 
Mm. But those days are over. Those days are over. The people, the people in, in authoritative positions aren't all, and I'm not suggesting here anarchy and complete chaos. It's ridiculous. Mm. So, I, I mean, if anybody's thinking that, forget that. Yeah. The issue is, is asking, why is this person saying this information to me while saying that this person over here can't say what they have on their mind? Mm -hmm. They decided that. I might not agree with what that person says, but I agree fundamentally that that person has a right to be able to say what they think. Mm -hmm. I will decide if I agree with that or not. Not you, not the government, not Dr. X. I will decide that. But you can't take away access to that information because you don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a very dangerous thing that people who are for this kind of censorship, the selective censorship of what they would classify as conspiracy theory or or or, or uh, ridiculous um, um, thoughts or narratives that don't to toe the party line, they agree that those guys should be censored. They don't seem to understand that someday they could be censored. Mm -hmm. When it hits them, it's too late. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that we, we kind of need to have a bearing of what's happening in society. And this is one of the reasons why politics kind of interests me, because we're seeing some of the best and the worst of humanity in politics yeah. and likewise in religion. Mm -hmm. And I find that very curious to watch from a perspective of, of kind of human behavior, mm -hmm. not so much the detail within, even though that's interesting, but it's more how people react macro level mm -hmm. to what's being told to them. Yeah, and I think free sense. yeah, it does. And I think freedom is really what this is about, like the freedom to worship, the freedom to disagree, the freedom of speech, mm. the freedom of thought, all of that, like this freedom. But you're right, it's so censored to the point mm. where, uh, you know, like Facebook, I think, deleted an entire group that was talking about some negative effects. I think it was of the vaccine or something like that. I could be wrong on this, but it was something that wasn't going on with the mainstream narrative. There was about 12,000 people in there sharing their stories and stuff. And boom, all of a sudden it disappeared. OK, yeah, and then there's it didn't happen. and then and then like there's other news sources. You, you go to click on a link in a news source and it'll they'll act, Facebook will come up with this little caption that will actually say this is this is a you know, this is a really uh, extreme thing yeah. or it's false or yeah. whatever. Or yeah. they'll take it down because the fact checkers said it was wrong. It's like, whoa, what is going on here? And I think you're right. Anybody who thinks that this is OK, it's going to come back to bite them eventually. They're not going to like mm -hmm. it might be fine for them right now. Maybe everything's going well. Maybe they they agree with the mainstream narrative. But as soon as that mainstream narrative narrative changes slightly and it starts mm -hmm. crouching in on their beliefs, their rights, their freedoms. And it's going to happen. As soon as you give this much power and control to the government and its programs and, and, and media sources, we're all like, yeah, I don't want to say like we're all going to hell in a handbasket, but like it's th mm -hmm. things are, are, are not going to get better unless we keep that freedom. No. We have to have freedom. Who checks the fact checkers? Right. <laughs> Who checks and holds to account the doctor's and authorities mm -hmm. within government when they are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Who holds them accountable? Well, it's supposed to be the citizens, but if the citizens are, are are like are are uh, getting sucked in, I guess, to that main narrative and they're getting Correct. shut down anything that they don't agree with, then all of a sudden there's zero accountability. Zero accountability. Correct. And that's Correct. when it goes really bad. Yeah. Yes. And that is the concern, I think, that on a macro level, when you see the the way the world is going and the, the kind of the mass mindset, if you will, mm -hmm. there are very few people that are willing to stand up and say something different because they will get chastised pretty heavily mm -hmm. or get some other facts that are thrown from different directions. But the issue here is that, yeah, okay. I don't want to go down too much to all these different <laughs> side holes, but you, you get the point. You get the point. Think for yourself. Think for yourself and ask why. But anyway, like I said, with, with this kind of topics, you can go on many, many uh, side trails of this. But the most important thing, I think, we have to really have to, uh, discernment. We really have to read carefully and understand carefully what's being told to us. Mm -hmm. And in, in doing so, it's also important to look at kind of uh, some historical uh, macro level influences that have happened in society throughout these many, many decades since even before World War II, for example. Mm -hmm. What kind of an effect that has had on mainstream media? Why are there only certain, um, again, why? Why are there only a certain amount of, of big news hubs that are filtering down the same kind of news globally all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't know that exists, or if you say that, well, Canada's exempt from that wrong, 
they're just a subsidiary of one of those hubs. Finland has a, a, a state um, news news company as well, just like CBC is in Canada. Mm-hmm. State run, mm-hmm. state news, state narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's anyway, uh, no, that's good. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's really helpful. And I just feel like, yeah, I just feel like if, if people are questioning, that's good. Question me, question Chris, question the mainstream media, question the other media's sources, question everything mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and really decide for yourself. But don't just because you keep hearing the same thing. It's like indoctrination, like, oh, this is this is what everybody's saying. Therefore, it must be right. No, mm-hmm. no, no, no. You know, and, and I have this this stubborn streak in me. So I think I'm, I'm well set up for this. I have the stubborn streak that like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what people say. I will do what I think is best and right. Um, you know, even just ask my husband, <laughs> like sometimes it could be like Carla, just give a little, you know, mm-hmm. but like, you know, mm-hmm. and I think sometimes that that can be a problem, but it can also serve somebody well, mm-hmm. because you're not willing to say if everybody's doing it, that makes me question it almost more. I'm like, well, why is everybody doing it? Whereas mm-hmm. unfortunately for, I think the majority of people, they think, well, everybody's doing it. Therefore that must be the right thing. And yeah. I just, I don't follow that. And, you know, maybe, yeah, and I don't I think I'm an, I don't think I'm an anomaly. I think a lot of people feel that way, but nobody wants mm-hmm. to say anything. You know how many people, Chris, right. that I have talked to mm-hmm. about like just all the stuff that's going on with COVID and stuff. And just like, like how we can't do this, we can't do that. You know, you can't run a, run a fitness class. You can't, you know, go to church, you, you know, in you have to tidy groups and like all the stuff that just keeps being down, 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 down. And I've talked to people and so many people are like, oh, Carl, I wish I could say something. I wish I could say something, but I'm going to lose my job. I wish I could say That's something, but right. And like you and, hit it. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. going to lose their job. They're going to lose their money. Mm-hmm. The government's given them loans. So now they're, they're, uh, they're uh, tied to the government, even things like, um, I, my family, they, they reach out to me. They say, Carla, my family is going to like, they're upset with me. So I can't share anything about this. So like everybody's afraid to share anything. And so I like, it's, it's, it's really sad, you know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's sad, but I'm just like, you know what? Like, whatever, like I, I will try to be that voice. I will try to empower people to say, you know what? Why are we afraid? Why are we afraid? Mm-hmm. Let's just talk what we want to talk. That's crazy that we should be so afraid. We live in a free Make country. That- that right there that we should be living in a free country free society but what's the underlying factor is you've you've said it a few times there fear fear yeah. fear and fear sells mm, yeah. fear is selling media sells that beautifully people respond to it well because of course if if we're told something is dangerous something's going to harm us and our loved ones we're going to do something about it mm-hmm. when people live in that fear they would want to do something, but they, they they can't because they're they're trapped by that fear. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is oh yeah, the, these are uh, <laughs> these are really these are really difficult topics. Because for example, if you look at it, if you look at a doctor, well, the doctors told us that we need to do this. The doctors in Canada say we need to do this. Go and see the doctor. Doctor says act this way, do this. This is the safe way to do it. Why is it that there are so many? Again, why? Why is it that there are so many doctors that then? who disagree with the approach, who have read for themselves, who are part of virology and, 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 and uh, um, uh, working in laboratories and have done these in, uh, independent tests. Why is it that those guys are censored? Mm-hmm. Why is it that those guys, it's, um, uh, those people's uh, attitudes and opinions are not valued? But we listen to the doctor that we go to that might not be reading. He or she is only doing what she or he is told. Mm-hmm. that's what they're supposed to say for whatever reason. If they're not thinking for themselves because they're too busy, they're too overworked. Mm-hmm. This is what they're told. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not a doctor. I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to take responsibility and I'm not attacking the doctors. I understand. I get it. I understand. I really do understand people's thoughts, but I think if we get to the core of the problem, if our thoughts are driven by fear and, or, our decisions are made based on what the masses are doing, knowing that that is a risk for myself. Is it worth it to take? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would say like, yeah, I would say it is worth it, but it's, it's tricky. It's Mm -hmm. tricky. And it's easy sometimes for one person to say, but I mean, if you have two experts, you've got a doctor here saying one thing, you have a doctor here saying one thing, but this one is, is, is bumped up by the mainstream media, by the government, whatever. Everyone's going to listen to this guy. Even if this guy might have just as much experience, possibly more experience and more training possibly. Possibly 
and and nobody's listening to them. They're actually censoring them. They're saying, no, 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 no. You got to question that. Mm-hmm. You got to question it. You can't go along with, and the more, like, honestly, the more people that I see, oh, he's the expert, the more that the media props somebody up, honestly, for me, the more I question them because I'm like, yeah, why are they propping flag. them up? Yeah, it's like, why are they propping them up so high? Why are we only listening to this person? Why are we only listening to this kind of media? Why is, why is, why are they, like, that's the thing. Why, 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 why? What is going on here? And think for yourself and be free and do what you want to do. I mean, I'm all, I'm all about that, right? I'm always preaching that even to my, like my fitness people. I'm like, you guys, if you want to reach goals, let's do it, right? Let's, if you want to run a business, let's do it. Let's do all these things. But the problem is, is you can only do it as long as the government allows you and you, you know, and that's where it's like, this is crazy. Like I seriously, almost right. every morning now I wake up and I'm like, where am I living? This is crazy mm-hmm. what's happening. And yeah. it's just getting worse and worse every day. So yeah, and I think the other thing that should be clear, clarified here is that obviously we're not saying that you shouldn't obey laws. Laws right. are there for a reason, absolutely, for safety, um, um, for, for, for organization, uh, law and order, all for that, no problem. I think, though, when you start having laws that infringe on the individual rights that people have actually gone to other countries to die for because they see that opposite uprising, and we are allowing that, at least in complicity, by staying and and doing nothing, saying nothing, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's, again, going back to, these are, again, my opinions. (laughs) You can have your own. I I just want to clarify that because that's one of the reasons why I'm so interested in these uh, political issues, because I'm curious about why people behave the way they do. Mm -hmm. What is influencing them and how are they doing it? And most importantly, why are they doing it? Yeah. And if you ask that question, forget, uh, no offense, forget your family, forget your own health, forget everything else. Why are they telling you to do this? Mm. What is the real reason behind it? Reverse engineer the problem. Try to put the onion back together till you form an actual picture. And maybe then things become a little bit clearer. At least that's my hope. Mm hmm down the rabbit hole really far but it is i'll be like well why why this and then i start looking and then like whoa that's whoa I, well why this and then you start asking those questions start looking into that and then pretty soon you start putting i was actually talking to a friend the other day chris and and we were kind of debating the whole covid thing and and stuff and she was like whoa carla the way like she's like i didn't i never put those things together i didn't put those those pieces together she's like that that makes sense to me now she's like wow when you talk about this you should put those pieces together so people can see right so i'm like exactly. that, that's it's amazing and, and you only can put those pieces together by asking those questions why this yeah. why this oh because of that like you know but it takes yeah. a little bit of work and not everybody's willing maybe to do that kind of work too yeah and that's okay that's okay but i think the the issue going back to the very beginning is that this ability to have this discussion mm-hmm. the, the 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 sharing of opinions i think that that is also just as important as mm-hmm. reading for yourself if you don't have the time to read, fine, no problem. If you're not unemployed, congratulations, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a good thing. No problem. But listen to people who have. Listen, mm-hmm. ask questions, process, think. I think that that's really important rather than it's very easy to sit at home on your sofa, open the, the turn on the TV, pardon me, turn on the TV and, and put on the hockey game, for example, very easy. And then whatever comes through the commercials, the commercial times, for example, commercial breaks, you're, you're just consuming that without even thinking. I think that if we if we if we just click the switch for a little while and actually make effort to think and process what what is really being told and then why, I think then we might be a little bit better off in a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, thanks, Chris. Yeah, we could keep going down yeah. here, but um, but yes, I think yes, of course. Yeah, I think it's just I think it's good. Just the, the main message here, I think, Chris, is just be open. Don't be afraid, or if you are afraid, ask yourself why and question, okay, why am I afraid here? Is this is this a legit thing? Like, is the bear going to come and eat me, or is there something else going on here? You know, ask yourself why over and over again, and uh, yeah. and I think that will that will do you well, hey? Any closing words? It's done words? well for me, at least so far. Yeah. Uh, not really. Not really. I think I think just be strong, be proud Canadians, and, and remember – remember what makes actually Canada very special. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things that has changed over the years, the perception of Canada, at least abroad now. I was talking with my wife earlier before starting this, is that the perception of Canada is like, well, it's it's China. You've got, you've got a lot of Chinese influence in Canada and in the politics. You even have a prime minister who absolutely adores um, dictators. He's openly said it. So I, I think that 
the general citizens of Canada really need to just just be happy with who they are, happy with the Canada that they know and work to maintain that Canada that so many hundreds of thousands of people in past decades have died to protect and maintain and protect against such creep, creeping in of, of ideology that is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And it is not congruent with the Canadian values. I think that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Protect it. Protect it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks yeah. for your great Thank words you. and insight. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's great. You're Take welcome. Care. Thank you for tuning into the podcast today. I absolutely love that you joined us. I love being able to record these and I love our guests. It's been so much fun. So thank you. Please like it, share it, comment, do all of the things that you feel like you want to do if you enjoyed this podcast. I really, really appreciate that. And this podcast has been brought to you by my company, Power Fitness Online. So everything that we do locally with our workouts, with our group nutrition coaching, and with all of the other fun events and stuff that we run, we put all of that online. So now you can access everything even if you're not locally, don't live in our area. So my coaches and I and all my staff, the whole team, we are putting so much work into these workouts. We're filming five fresh workouts every single week so that you never have to do the same workout twice. We're also doing group nutrition and personal nutrition coaching so that you get exactly what you need. And you know what the best part is? It's the community. The absolute best part is just knowing that you have the support, that you have the encouragement, that you have everything you need to succeed. So go to powerfitnessonline.com.